The book I'm going to read to you is from a series of books written by these guys. Um, it's a series called A Serendipity Book. Uh, they tell you a story and then there's a moral to the story at the end. I think it's funny. It cost $1.95. Um, I bought this book along with a bunch of other books when I was in high school. At morning meeting, ask me about them, like why I bought them and who I read them to. The one I'm choosing to read to you is called Katundra. It says it's dedicated to Catapus, the cat that or, or originally inspired this story, and Maxwell the cat, Uncle Marble, Pancake, Smokey, Skunk, Munch, Ninja, Nikki, Angel, and all other fat cats in the world. Steve, that's the author. I used to have a fat cat named Misha. Well, she was technically Gabriella's cat. In a perfect part of the forest, in a land of fur, purrs, and meows, stood an old dilapidated cabin that no one had lived in for a long, long time. Dilapidated means kind of like it's broken down. The, ca the cabin was in such poor shape that none of the creatures of the forest would live there. None, that is, except a ragtag bat cat named Katundra. She lived there because it was the only place where she could hide from the other animals who would laugh and call her names. Katundra, you see, had always been a little bit plump. You could say, in, fa in fact, call her downright fat. From dawn to dusk, whenever the other creatures of the forest would pass the old cabin, they would shout out and call her names. Katundra is a fatty, neener, neener, neeners. Sometimes they'd jeer. We'd better run away because fat Katundra might waddle over here and sit on us. Then other chanting, after chanting their nasty remarks, they would run into the forest amidst gales of laughter. Poor Katundra would feel so bad after their name calling that she felt she just had to do something to for forget what they had said. And so she would eat more and more. Every time she ate some more, she got a little fatter, which made her feel worse, so she ate more. Every day, it was the same thing over and over until Katundra became so fat that she could barely walk at all. Then one day it happened that she could find nothing to eat. She looked in her favorite spot for catching mice, but they were all gone. She waddled over to the creek, but the fish were all gone. Oh, what do I do? She cried. I am hungry and miserable. If I wasn't so miserable, I wouldn't be so hungry. It was then that Katundra noticed right in front of her nose, a pile of dirt that seemed to be moving. She watched with her head cocked to one side as the lump of dirt shrug, sh shrugged once, sneezed twice, twice, shrugged once, sneezed twice, revealing a small, pathetic looking mole. The mole slowly shook the dirt from his ears rubbed the dust from his eyes, and carefully looked around. That's odd, he said. The sky is clear, but I'm standing in a shadow. Hmm. 
he turned around to see what was causing the shadow. And sure enough, there was a very hungry looking Katundra with an oops and an excuse me. He ran, he made a dash back into back to his burrow. He had just gotten his head back in the hole when with a slow movement of her paw, Katundra trapped that poor mole by his tail. With a tear in her eye, Katundra carefully picked up the mole and waddled back to the cabin, enjoying her melancholy meal. Are you going to eat me? asked the mole. Yes, sobbed Katundra. The mole thought for a moment and then asked, Why me? I'm barely a mouthful. My fur is all full of rocks and I possibly taste like dirt. Surely there's something you would rather eat than me. I'm going to eat you, sobbed Katundra. Not because you're good to eat, but because there isn't anything else to eat. And I have to eat because I'm so miserable. Now, wait a minute, said the mole indignantly. So he was dropped with a plump. Why do you feel so miserable? Katundra decided to tell him the whole story of how she got a little fat as a kitten and how other cats laughed at her and made fun of her. She went on telling how she had run away from, run away to this cabin, but had no sooner arrived than all the other creatures of the forest began making fun of her too. So you see, little mole, the only thing that makes me happy is to eat. It was at that moment that the mole came up with a super plan. Cat, he said, you're going to, you're going about this all wrong. Rather than eating, you should go on a diet and get yourself in shape. If you're not fat, then nobody can make fun of you. And if you, they don't make fun of you, you won't be miserable. And if you're not miserable, you won't want to eat. Katundra looked at the mole and thought and thought, maybe little mole, you are right, but you will help me. And if you are wrong, I can always eat you later. So beginning that day, Katundra started to exercise with the little mole. He would have her jog just a little way, then stop and let her rest. Then when she had, got, she had caught her breath and rested well, he would have her run some more, always telling her how slim and beautiful she, she would be. Katundra had been exercising for days and days, slowly but surely was losing weight. Once in a while, one of the creatures of the forest would stop and tease her, but the little mole would run him off and remind Katundra that soon there would be nothing to tease her about. Once in a while, Katundra would get that hungry look in her eye, but the little mole would wisely let her eat some fresh vegetables. Once he even let her catch a small minnow from the stream just to keep her strength. By now, Katundra had lost so much weight that the little mole had to hang on her neck as she raced furious, furiously about the cabin. She would run from tree to just from up a tree just as high and as fast as she could, then turn and dash merrily back down again. She would jump higher than she had ever been able to jump before, and soon 
and ah, and you know the mole surprise the, the most surprising thing was that she wasn't sad or melancholy anymore most importantly the other creatures of the forest didn't call her names because she had slimmed down to the prettiest cat you ever you had ever seen And it came to be that on any beautiful summer morning, you could find Katundra basking in the sunshine with the little mole fast asleep, leaning on her knee. So, if you're ever fat and overweight and feeling a little blue, remember that ragtag cat, that ragtag mole and what he had Katundra do. Look, there's a long list of the serendipity books and I have almost all of them. Remember, ask me at morning meeting to tell you more about why I chose to buy these books.